All around the world today, leaders, academics, pundits, and policymakers in the fields of energy, climate, and economics are preoccupied with a very small number with very large implications, two degrees. This is the amount of uh, global average temperature rise that world leaders have agreed must be the upper limit if we wish to avoid the worst effects of climate change. But, ladies and gentlemen, of course, we all know, we've, we've said this before, that number must be backed up by action. And many CO2 emitting domains need to be addressed. Transport, industry, agriculture, and of course, energy. And that's what the IEA looks into. And as IEA analysis has repeatedly shown, the cost and difficulty of such action, of mitigating greenhouse gas emissions, increases every year. And time is of the essence. And yet, do not mistake me, we, we are not only talking about 2015, and we are not only talking about COP21. This was an urgent issue already in 2013 when we released our first World Energy Outlook Special Report on climate change. And it's an even more urgent issue today. And its urgency will be only that of much greater tomorrow. And while we see growing consensus among countries that it's time to act, we must ensure that the steps taken are adequate and that the commitments are kept. And this is the essence of concerted policies. Act and track. Agree upon, take the necessary actions and track progress. The IEA is committed to being part of this discussion and indeed it's clear that the energy sector must play a critical role if efforts to reduce emissions are to succeed. We all know that energy production and use account for two-thirds of the world's greenhouse gas emissions. Any climate action plans absolutely must bring deep cuts in these emissions, while at the same time sustaining the growth of the world economy, boosting energy security around the world and bringing modern energy to the billions who lack it today. There are already some encouraging signs with the historic joint announcement by the United States and China on climate change. And there are climate pledges for COP21 being submitted by a diverse range of countries and in development in many others. And yet the true test of commitment will be in the translation of these pledges into actions into policies. Thankfully, there are already examples that we can point to. Since we released redrawing the energy climate map in 2013, countries have taken some positive steps on important issues such as fossil fuel consumption subsidies, methane flaring, and limits on inefficient coal-fired energy production. And at the same time, the use of low-carbon energy sources is expanding rapidly. And there are signs that growth in the global economy and energy-related emissions may be starting to decouple. The global economy grew by around 3% in 2014, but energy-related carbon dioxide emissions stayed flat. And that's the first time in at least 40 years that such an outcome has occurred outside economic crisis. This may be just one year, but it is a sign of what can be possible if the world decides to take concerted, comprehensive and strategic actions on emissions. And yes, this will mean putting a price on carbon, whether through a tax, trading scheme or otherwise, like regulating emission ceilings or CCS. And it will mean continuing to increase efficiencies across the board. And it will mean investing in research and development, spurring the innovative technologies and thinking that will be necessary to take for taking us toward a cleaner and, of course, a brighter future. Ladies and gentlemen, the report we are launching today sets out a scenario, a scenario detailing what can be done today to truly make a difference. But it's, it's a bridge scenario. And the bridge scenario of this report shows what could be done, as I mentioned, what could be achieved. But world leaders, business and policy makers must choose what to do next. And we hope that they will use the findings of our report to craft and implement concrete, realistic and actionable plans. Plans that will start to make a difference today. We are talking about legislation, we are talking about regulation. A transformation of the world's energy system must become a, a unifying vision if the two degree climate goal is ever to be achieved. And this challenge is daunting. But our analysis show that, and has shown, how to responsibly decarbonize the energy sector over the long term. And this potential can, ultimately, be achieved 
only collectively. So thank you for your time. And now I'll turn the floor over to Fatih Birol, who will walk you through some of the detail of our new report.